This next request is from the movie critic dude, who wants me to look at a movie that gathered some attention last year. It's called Swimming to Sea, but most people refer to it as Podoc. This is a South Korean movie animated by E. Dehi Animation Studio and distributed by CJ Entertainment. It was initially released in 2012, but then moved on to Steam in 2016. Both the writer and director of this movie is Dai He Lee, who hasn't done anything else as far as I could tell, but has received a thank you credit in the 2019 hit film Parasite. One could argue that those two works have some thematic overlap, but a better frame of reference could come from something like Watership Down and Plague Dogs, animal movies that can get pretty dark and gruesome. Yeah, this movie is not for the faint of heart, but if you're not scared off yet, let's chow down on a big ol' plate of Podoc! It's a chicken dish, so... Anyway, we begin at this gloomy Korean fishing village out by the docks, where we're introduced to our main fish character. She's taken to a sushi restaurant where she's stuffed into a tank full of other fishes, but that's not even the worst part. <laughs> This might seem normal to us, but then you stop and think about how horrifying the setting is for the fish. And look at this one. Its mouth is still gasping. Like, I think this is just the movie exaggerating for effect, because I would never guess that fish can do that after death. Anyway, our main fish character is trying to move from one tank to another to get away, but everyone else is playing dead to discourage the humans from eating them. 아저씨, 고등어 빼곤 다 죽었나 봐요. 그게 다 잡아졌네. 아저씨 이거 오늘 들어온 거 맞는 거예요? 아유 참, 오늘 아침에 들어왔다니까. Yeah, our species isn't portrayed in the kindest light here. We are super gullible to the playing dead trick, and we are pretty scary too as this one guy takes out a mackerel and prepares it for a meal. I think it's a good moment to bring up the earlier content warning because this sequence is pretty unsettling. Very scary stuff. So while our fish character is trying to get out, the other fish don't seem to really care if she hurts herself. They even make fun of her by giving her a name. Podoc, or Flappy. And speaking of named characters, we are introduced to the tank's top brass. There's this flatfish, sometimes called the Master, and Anago, the second-in-command eel. For the purpose of clarity, I'll still call them the flatfish and eel respectively. And these two don't appreciate Podoc's shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> but this talking down does not stop Podoc. She in turn remembers the events that got her into this mess, and they're presented with a wonderfully stylish music sequence. <laughs> Now the main animation style for this movie reminds me of some Telltale works. It's not at that level, but this effect fits well with the overall theme of inevitable doom as the fish are waiting around for the humans to gruesomely kill them. This is meant to make the audience feel really uncomfortable, and also sympathetic to Podoc's situation. But otherwise, sequences like this can be colorful and varied with the different animation styles. But humans only offer part of the nightmare fuel. You see, a dying farm fish gets brought into the fish tank, and the flatfish and eel greet it like this. <laughs> This is how 
how low they sank. With no obvious means of escape, they reduced to killing the weak to sustain themselves. So Paddock obviously isn't going to wait around and be the fish's next meal. She tries escaping again, but runs out of breath in the attempt. Thankfully, someone outside puts her back in, but that means she's back to square one. So she gets to partake in the wonderful ritual of sharing riddles amongst the other fishes. And the reward for solving them? A tail to nibble on. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the only fish on the main character's side is this greenling named Spotty. He's just fascinated with what life in the outside world is like, and he gets a lot of mileage out of asking Paddock about her past. And through some dialogue, we could tell that Paddock did quite a bit of living before getting stuck here. It's at this point where we start to see a more nuanced side to the flatfish. We learned that he had a mate who had a similar disposition to Paddock when they were younger, but his soul was ultimately crushed when he lost the love of his life. <laughs> So while I'm still creeped out by his eating other fish, you at least know his motivations and where he's coming from. That's a hell of a lot better than the eel, the closest thing we have to a non-human villain. While he seems to loyally follow the flatfish, his desire to see him and Podak fight suggests an ulterior motive. <laughs> This eel is so lucky that Bruce is in another franchise. Anyway, it's Paddock's turn to tell riddles due to her past experience in the ocean. The eel breaks into song to egg her on, and I gotta say, the music in this movie is really well done. <laughs> I especially like the piano solo that comes partway near the end of the song. uses this opportunity to get the group to brainstorm ideas that could help everyone escape. The sea bass then suggests asking the king crabs below them to break their holding tank, which is crazy enough to work. Pata can speak other fish tongues to communicate with said crabs, but through arguing later, they proceed to beat the crap out of her. I'd like a second opinion. The next day, while the tanks are being cleaned, Paddock and Spotty make a break for it. It starts out well, but the former then cancels her own possible escape when she sees a customer delaying the latter's progress. So close, and yet so far. She comes back to see the flatfish conversing with a new arrival. And for all his talk about everyone being doomed, he sounds surprisingly defiant about his not being dead yet. <laughs> and 
And speaking of Defiant, Potic decides to jump into another tank to try talking to the King Krabs. But this reaching out causes more harm than good, since none of them want to talk. In fact, they are attacking her for overcrowding their space. She only escapes again because of Kid Ex Machina, and she's now in a totally new fish tank teaming with Clownfish. This is the closest we're going to get in terms of finding Nemo knockoff territory, because here is something you won't see Dory do on screen. <laughs> I guess she doesn't mind the funny taste. Meanwhile, Spotty tries breaking out on his own and makes his way to the other tank. And while Paddock is eating up the last of the clownfish in her tank, she accidentally breaks this knight statue whose sword gets stuck in her gills. What follows is nothing short of sad. <laughs> is just cruel. And I guess this movie thinks there's too little salt in the wound, so it has a flashback of a conversation between Potok and Spotty. You know, just in case your soul wasn't crushed to powder yet. And now Spotty's corpse makes its way over to the flatfish's tank. But here's a small sign that these fishes grew some standards. Save for the eel, no one is willing to eat Spotty. I'm gonna give one in the show. Mm. If you're waiting for Eel to get his comeuppance, don't bother. He's wearing some pretty thick plot armor. And wow, they brought Potok back without removing the sword piece. And then she goes after the flatfish because of his possible role in Spotty's death. But then they're interrupted when a human couple orders something to eat. They want some flatfish in their stomachs, so that bastard is taken out of the tank. It is a long and agonizing wait for the end. Maybe too long, since he's still there even after two other fish were served. <laughs> Flatfish is reminiscing before his final moments. And to also show that the Flatfish has not completely given into despair, where he offered survival tips to Spotty back when he was still new. It shows that he's not just looking out for number one, he's just not taking whatever he wants from those unable to defend themselves. He was trying to help others inside the fish tank, exactly like his mate before him. His mind then wanders to something Spotty asked back then. Um, no. What Well, he's about to find out, because right before he's about to die, the human couple changes their minds. They want to eat Podok instead. Well, at least the sword is out of her by the time he gets back. But now, it's time for the passing of the torch moment. <laughs> It's apparent that Flatfish wanted to be free all along, but his fear of failure prevented him from taking action. Seeing other fish die before him was also quite disheartening, but that was unavoidable. All that matters now is for the Flatfish to do everything he can to escape this hellhole and to begin the life he always wanted. This is essentially the last message Potok gives him before she's taken away. 
It's a beautiful meeting of the minds, and it shows how these two characters, once at odds with one another, have finally connected on common ground. <웃음> 야 이거 봐라 거두어 담배 진짜 잘 피워 어 징그러지 야 장난치지 마 불쌍하잖아 I hope you choke on the bone you miserable human filth The next morning Flatfish decides to make a break for it alone He appears to be caught in his attempt But the chef is about to receive a nasty surprise <웃음> Well, he's free now, thank goodness. And as the credits roll, we see what awaits him beyond the fish farms. So like I've said to start this review, this movie is best compared to works like Watership Down and Plague Dogs. It uses its animation to tell an animal story that feels terribly hopeless and grim, thus making any victory for the good guys deeply satisfying and rewarding. You're made to care about a bunch of fish and what happens to them. Other reviewers argue that Dai He Lee wanted to use this story as a metaphor to describe the ills of human society, and I could see that. The way the bigger fish can take bites off smaller fish, just because they can is a possible analogy of power relations between the rich and poor, or elites against the rest. Kinda sounds like an animal precursor to Parasite, now that I think about it. But I'll leave this sort of thematic speculation to others. I don't mind the flatfish getting out, despite my rooting for Paddock and Spotty more. I just wished Eel got his comeuppance for his behavior. But at least he's still in the tank with everyone else. Eventually, someone will get him. In any case, I can safely say that this movie is definitely worth watching, given how creative it is. It tells a tale about regaining lost hope despite everything going to hell, and you'll be pulled into its emotional highs and lows. And maybe you'll feel more empathy towards the fish that we eat and take for granted too. And for our final request, we got one last TV show to cover, and it's an isekai anime, but one that I feel is very problematic for many reasons. Tune in next time when we see a certain hero rising. Ne. Ne ga